Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with another product review for you, and this time it is a set of markers, and I wanted to post this review today because um, these markers are just uh, available today. They're brand new. I received this set a couple weeks ago. I do want to disclose that um, the Artix company sent me this for free so I could review it, and um, I have reviewed their products in the past, so when they've got something new coming, they usually will ask me if it's something I'd be interested in reviewing, so I do like to review, especially budget markers, because um, the more information that are out about these products before people go and buy them, the better. That way they can look at a few reviews before they decide whether it's for them or not. Um, I do know that these are going to be going on sale today on Amazon, and there will be a 10% off coupon code that you can, or a coupon that you can click and apply for one week one week from today. Today is um, February 23rd when this video is going up, so you'll have one week if you're interested in buying that. Um, these markers will be around a dollar on either set that I'm going to show you. They'll be either side of a dollar. They're a little bit less in this larger set, a little bit more in the smaller set that I'm going to show you. So um, let's get right to it. I have put these in their cases that came. So let me show you how they come in the box. Um, so I'll be showing you the set of 80 assorted colors and the set of uh, 36 skin tones. Those are the first two that are going to be available to purchase. They come in a, um, I'll kinda, I, I would say pizza box style, like the way they open up. Um, pretty sturdy box, and in here all your markers lay will be laying flat in there, and then you've got a couple plastic cases that um, they're kind of like the grid cases, kind of like Copic has. They're the like what's in the bottom of um, marker boxes sometimes to hold your markers all straight and in order. They're in here, and then there's also um, a sheet of stickers. There's a little postcard that you could use, and there's just a little um, oh kind of like a. Um, just kind of like a cheat sheet that tells you how to, um, you know, how to store your markers, what they, what's involved. You got a brush tip, you got a broad tip. Um, shows you the different things that come. It also comes with a little tilt stand that you can put your marker racks in, which is we'll see that in a second. Um, it tells you that the marker is alcohol based, and well, I love the stink lines. <laughs> <laughs> expects some odor. I think the odor is very low on these, um, so much that I had to kind of sniff them. They didn't, like, I wouldn't be able to smell them just using them, but that's me. I'm used to markers, so if you're sensitive, it's an alcohol marker, just like Copic or Prismacolor or any of those. Um, and it just tells you to, you know, cap them up after use, so it's just kind of a cute little, um, a cute little cartoon. It shows you the racks in use, and um, it's kind of cute. So each set comes with one of those. And they also come with a swatch card that you can fill out. And I'll just show you the um, the swatch card for the 36 markers and the swatch card for the 80 set. Now, if you have the original Artix markers, the um, the original Alps, the 80 set A, the first set they came out with, are the exact same colors as in this set. The difference being that instead of a bullet and chisel tip, you get a brush and chisel tip. So. Um, just want to, you know, put that out there. Um, same color scheme. The I'm not crazy about the swatch card that they give you, but I do like that it has the number and the name on each of these cards. Now, on the 80 set, your names and numbers are going to be very familiar with a lot of the other budget markers that you will come across, such as the classic Ohuhu's, um, Art and Fly, which isn't really a but They're a little bit more expensive than like your budget line, but they do have refills. They was run on the Shinhan color system, so you could get Shinhan re refills for these. I did ask them if they're going to be doing ink refills or open stock markers or replaceable nibs, and they got back to me and said that, that they will either do replaceable, like open stock markers, or they will do refills and replaceable nibs. So um, they're planning on doing one or the other. So that's great news, because um, a lot of times the budget brands don't don't offer that. And for a brush marker, around a dollar a marker, I think that's definitely falling in the budget range. Um, so there's just so you can get a look there. Now these markers, I noticed this the swatch cards, they look a little bit lighter than they do on say my um, Nina Classic Crest cardstock or the marker paper I typically use, but they do correspond quite well with the Artix brand marker paper. So if you're looking for a marker paper that doesn't bleed through, that gives you a more pastel tone, I would recommend the Artix 
uh, marker paper. I did get some other information from my contact at Artix. Um, she said that they are planning on coming out with another skin tone set as well that will have some deeper tones. Now something that was really interesting about their skin tone set, which is the same with their um, their original version, which is right here, which we'll compare the ah, my hands in the way, sorry, which I will compare in a moment. Um, one interesting thing about that is if you go by the color names, not the numbers, but you go by the color names, because these are not on the Shinhan um, scheme of color numbering, by the names that they match the Copic colors, at least the Copic colors that I have. I have about 100 Copic markers, and um, I, I matched up all the ones I had by the same name, and they seem to be perfect matches. So you could buy the Copic reinkers by name and refill the skin tone markers. So I thought that was really interesting. And of course, you can get refills from Art and Fly or from Shinhan to refill your classic, your your uh, 80 colors or the Artix Alps. So these are called the Artix Oros markers, and uh, they have the same body and the same um, uh, the same caps as the Artix markers. So they'll look the same in your storage, if you do keep them in a storage rack altogether. They have a different color barrel though, so let me just grab one of the Artix Alps to show you. Let's see, this is number 16, I can grab the 16 in here. I'm just gonna move this box out of the way. I just wanted to show you how they come, um, just so, you know, you'll know, move this sample out of the way. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So the bodies are the same. They are both a, um, a kind of triangular round body. They are nice thick plastic, like the caps, you can see how nice and thick that is. I've never had any of my Artix markers be dry on me. Okay, so in the, on one end of the markers, on both of them, you get a chisel nib. The, the originals, eh, I think they're just about identical. I was saying maybe the originals look like they're a little bit wider, but I think they're probably exactly the same. And then on the other end, you have a bullet, a really actually they're quite a fine bullet and quite a fine brush. And let me just grab a little scrap of paper here. So this is the original, the Alp. So you get a fine, you get a broad, and the broad, of course, you can, you can use different areas of it. And then on the new brush markers that are the gray body, they both have matte plastic, which is really comfortable to hold. Um, you've got a brush, you can get a fine line with your brush, you can, you can bend it a little bit, you can press to get a thicker line. Um, they are a fiber tip marker rather than a foam rubber marker, so I just want to let you know that. Um, I prefer the foam rubber ones, kind of like the Art and Fly Copic and Altenew. These are the same bodies as the Altenew and the Artify markers, by the way. Um, I do prefer the, the more flexible nibs of the foam rubber kinds, but those are expensive, so I don't know how they could sell a marker for a dollar and have those nibs in them, since the nibs cost a couple dollars a piece usually when I go to buy replacements. Um, and then on the body, you've got, it says Made in China, you've got the, um, the Oros on the gray body and Alp on the white body, and it does a little indicator which tells you what side is brush and what side is the bullet nib. So I'm going to cap these right back up now. And we're going to take a look at the nibs a little bit closer. And I also want to see, because um, Artix is saying they're going to come out with either open spot markers or nibs, I want to see if, like say you had the old version, if you could possibly take the old version and maybe put the nib from the newer version in there. So I'm going to grab a couple colorless blenders so I don't get my hands all dirty. And let's see if the brush nib will fit on the... Um, on the Alco on the on the um, the chisel nib side, so there is my Alp, and here is, I mean that's my Oros. Here's my Alp. So what I'm going to do is pull out. I'm going to try to pull out the chisel. So this is the original one. So if you already have these and you're thinking maybe I'll just get brush nibs and put them in there, let's see if that will work. Now the brush nibs, um, they seem to be just like the Ohuhu nibs. They're reversible. So if the nib starts to fray, you could flip it around, which I think is great because the fiber nibs tend not to last quite as long. And look at that. That will fit perfectly. So if you've got the old style, you want a brush nib for some of the colors, but you don't really want to invest in a whole new set, you could just buy some brush nibs and pop them in there and um, and do that as well. And uh, I really hope they go the nib and refill ink route rather than open stock, but it's nice to know that they're going to do one or the other, according to my um, according to my contact. 
those are exactly the same size. It seems like the uh, the brush nib goes into the gray marker a little easier, but they appear to be exactly the same size. So, um, so that's nice to know because I know some of us, especially if you're a stamper, I gotta make sure I get that in right because I got markers once and they didn't, the nibs weren't seated in very well. Let's see. So I want to make sure that I get that in where it's going to be comfortable. There we go. Um, like the the Artify ones, I got the uh, the chisel nibs were all over the place. All I did swatch out all of the um, Artix Oros markers all, with a chisel side to make sure the chisel nibs were seated well and they were comfortable to hold, and they were. So um, so that was good. So I think that's interesting. Um, so let's look at some of the things that I drew and colored with these markers. And um, then we'll take a look at the bags and we'll take a look at and we'll do a little blending demo so that, you know, you can kind of see how they how they go. So this is my Ahuhu marker pad. I really like the um, the Ahuhu marker pads for um, for marker artwork because they have a tiny little bit of texture enough that I could put color pencil over if I want to. So here I was just kind of drawing a, a flower. It looks like some sort of iris just to play with them and see. That was the first thing I did with them. I was pretty happy with the lay down and whatnot. Here I did some blending tests with different colors, and um, for the most part, I found the the blends to be pretty good. The only downside I will say, and these were from the eighty set, is that the because um, I went in with a skin tone. I did a video on the skin tone set from their other, and I'll link that down below of their older set, which is the same color, so you can get a little more information about that color palette. This is just kind of in the marker sets in general. Um, and also you can see the video, the uh, review I did of the original 80 color set where I did a lot of marker blends demoed. So if you are interested in that, you can check that out. Those were done mainly with the chisel. Well, they were obviously done with a chisel and bullet tip. Um, so some things that I did notice, like some of the colors are very close together, but it did make a nice blend. Um, but if you wanted, say, in purples, and purples are a hard color. I don't know why most marker colors companies don't offer, like... They offer really pale or really or really dark. They don't offer a mid-tone. I think it's because purple is such an unstable color. It's very it shifts and it's very difficult to get those purple tones. Um, so I did have a I did have a trouble with that, but that's pretty typical with purples. But the other colors I found blended pretty well. Um, and you actually do get some neutrals in the um, in the 80 color set. So I'm just gonna hold this so you just see the 80 colors. You know, you do have a few nice neutral tones in here that can get you by as far as coloring. And then you've got like some really pale tones up here. So if you had these pale tones and you had this pale, kind of medium pale tone, and then you have these darker tones, I mean, you could do some skin tones with there and be, have kind of an all-in-one set that would get a lot done. Now, this is the, um, below this line there, that is the skin tone set, just to give you a, give you an idea. The, um, like I mentioned, the, my contacts said they're coming out with another skin tone set that has more rich colors because um, they got a lot of customer feedback saying that their skin tone set was too light. And I did find that their skin tone light set was very much on the pale side. I think, though, if you had the Arctic skin tone and you had the Ohuhu skin tone set, um, the old, like, I have the old Ahuhu one that has more of the warmer undertone browns um, and darker colors. When these have more of the cooler undertone, paler colors, I think those two sets together would be, like, the perfect mega skin tone mix mash that you could find because they're so, they're so similar. And I think, actually, Artix did in their older, their first iteration of markers where they had the, the chunky cap and the skinny cap, which I actually like those markers a lot too. I think they did have a set more like that when they originally came out with it. And people probably said they were too dark and so they went this way. But, um, but anyway, uh, this is the range you get in the 36 skin tone set. And um, being a brush tip, it is easier to blend with a brush tip, so you can layer up and have an easier time than with the bullet and the chisel version. So, um, so I just wanted to wanted to go there and, and show you that. And then um, I did make some notes here when I was when I was uh, coloring this. So one thing I noticed was that the caps and the swatches don't match all that well. And um, and not that that's a big deal. Most markers and their caps don't match perfectly. But the problem is some marker caps look way lighter than what the ink looks like and some look darker. So it's not like they all uniformly look darker than their caps or they all uniformly look lighter than the caps. Some look lighter, some look darker. So that's um, that's tricky. You definitely have to have your swatch in front of you when you're working. And definitely swatch on the paper you typically use because um, because 
the uh, the swatches that come with it will make the marker ink look a lot lighter and you'll be surprised when you go and you color on your regular paper if it's not the Artix marker paper, if you're not using that paper. That paper is good, there's nothing wrong with it, but I typically want a more absorbent paper so I can blend more. Um, let's see, we're going to look at the packaging. I do have some criticisms with the packaging. We'll see that in a second. The nibs were very well placed. The, um, the brush nib, I noticed on lighter colors, it felt a lot stiffer than with, than on darker colors. Um, so like, I feel like I don't have very much flex in that really light color, but I felt like I have a much more flex in say a, um, like a darker color. And it could just be that because like, um, your... Uh, your darker colors have less alcohol in them and more pigment and probably some lubricant in there and the alcohol is just, you know, thinner and stiffer and doesn't want to let things flex a little bit more maybe. That's just my, um, that's how like, you know, if you have the lighter colors feel drier, you know, even when they're brand new, I think it's because of higher alcohol content. Um, let's see, and I think I touched on all the other things here. All right, was that all I had in there? Yes, so I found they were very easy to work with, very easy to color with. Let's do a coloring demo. Here I have done a few different um, versions and I'll tell you what colors I used for each just so you have that. So for this one, I used these three colors. I used fluorescent orange, 122. I used 13 and 16 for that color blend there. For this one here, I used 7, 9, and 135, and I also use that for these over here. Oh, another thing, um, these are very juicy markers. Do not uncap them over your work or you will get some spatter, especially in your reds I and greens. I had that happen with another sketch that I did, so do not uncap over your work, at least while the markers are new and juicy, because you're, you can get some spatter. And these, will, I'm going to cut these out with my scan and cut and use them in cards, but um, or in bookmarks or something, but, uh, but that would be a real bummer if you weren't expecting that, like it was in your sketchbook or something. This one here was a two-color blend that was 67 and 63, and by the way, if you have any of these other budget brands that use the same coloring system, which is a lot of them, you can just go ahead and use those colors because they're going to match for you. Um, these yellows here are 24, 33, and 37. And the reds here, which I think that's the blend I'm going to show you because reds can be really tricky to blend, so I think I'll do that one for the demo. Um, I used 1, 2, and 10. And then for greens, I used 42, 47, and 48. Now, luckily, when I'm looking at these, I can tell what's the darkest, what's the medium, what's the lightest, um, but that's not always the case. Like, if you look at one and two, one is darker than two, but the color chips look pretty much identical. Um, so the swatching is very important with these. Um, that would probably be my biggest criticism with these markers is the color caps, and that was also my criticism the last time uh, when, I, when I first reviewed these. The... Um, I know the skin tone, yeah, the skin tones are still also kind of difficult. You definitely just, you've got to swatch, no matter what, with markers. All right, I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to do a quick demo here. I probably won't do all the colors, all the petals, but we'll do a couple. So I'm going to start off with the stem. I'm going to start off with my darkest green, because greens are very easy to blend colors. So I'm just going to go in with my shadow and get that right under the flower where it would be casting a shadow. Then I'm going to blend that out with my medium tone. I'm just going to go about a third Overlap about a third and bring that down to about halfway. Then again, I'm going to overlap about a third and bring that down the rest of the way. Now, I'll be cutting these with my skin and cut machine, so I will need to take a black pen and just cut like a draw at the bottom of that so it will recognize it. Now, if you've got an area that doesn't seem very well blended, you can go over it. Like, a, oops, I want to do that with the. And you can re-blend the whole thing if you need to, but usually with greens you don't. They're pretty, they're pretty easy. And then we will do this little area above. So here I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of shadow where I think I would see shadow. These stamps are by Altenew, by the way. I think this set is called Wonderland. Um, I'll try to remember to link that down below as well so you can find it. I assume it's a current product. I hope so. I don't think they, um, I don't think they discontinue their stuff as often as other brands. I tend to appreciate that. I tend to, you know, use more stamps from companies that don't discontinue so quickly because that's a pet peeve of mine. And there, we'll get this little, little leaf blended out. And you can see that they do blend out pretty well because they feed out quite a bit of ink. So if you're doing this with a, another type of marker, 
Take advantage of the chisel tip because that's going to feed out more ink and that's where you get your blending. So let's do the red blend because red's difficult. And I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you a way to both get a little bit more variety, a little bit more range, and also to um, to get uh, to get a nice blend. So we're going to start with the lightest color. Now I'm going to color in. Um, I'm going to color in this petal here. I'm going to start where it's darker and I'm going to go almost to the outer highlight color. Now this is my lightest color. It's number 10 and I'm going to color almost right out to the edge. Okay, now quickly I'm going to take my darkest color, which is number one. Yes, I know these colors don't really make the name numbers don't really make sense. But um, if you're used to that coloring system, because, you know, I've had so many budget markers and they tend to use that a lot, um, it's pretty easy to remember. Now I'm going to go with two, which is my next color and I'm working quick. And I'm going to color that almost up to the edge of where I colored that first color. Then I'm going in with the first color again, which is number 10. And I'm going to color over the entire thing right out to the edge. And that's just going to give me an extra color of light because I'm not going to have any layer of color underneath that. So I would just repeat that for every single petal here. We'll do it again right here. Color it in with the lighter color first. Leaving that edge if you want to get a little bit of lift at the edge. Go in with... with uh, my darkest, which is number one. Take your time, you don't want to smudge into the other. And don't open over your, um, and don't open this, don't open your markers over your work like I'm doing. Uh, just trying to save a little, a little time and then just color it all the way up to the edge. And look at that beautiful smooth red blend. Red is a, one of those tricky colors. And there, look at that, you can get some gorgeous, you can get gorgeous blends all the way around and I did that same thing right there. Okay, so now we're going to look at the cons. Um, I mean, overall, I'm pretty positive about these markers, but there is a pretty significant issue I have with the case of the larger markers. So this is so nice and neat and tidy when all your markers are in it, right? It's a nice cube. It's a nice brick. It looks cute. It's kind of funky. However, it is very difficult to get your markers out. You can't really use them in this case because you can't get to the ones in the corner. It's very hard to put the, the markers in and out and I kind of need to dump these out in order to access them. So that is a problem for me. Um, however, on the other case, and I don't know why they did this, all they need to do would be to do a, a top like this and let the marker extend, let the zipper extend. And then I would be able to get all of my markers out like I can with a skin tone. So I'm just going to pull these skin tones out because so I can show you how the marker cases or the tilt cases work. See, these come out easily because you have a little more space. There's not a centimeter of extra space in the other rack, so it's kind of um, so it's kind of a bummer. And it would, I would have to fiddle with those for a few minutes to get them out. So they come with these little cases here. They come with one, for every one of these little plastic things, there's two big ones in the 80 set and there's three smaller ones in the 36 set. There's no duplicates, by the way, in these sets. So that's nice. You don't have to worry about like buying the same marker twice. So what you do is you take one of these little sets. They're packaged individually, but I just put them all in one baggie. So you've got two legs and one crossbar. You're going to put little crossbar into the little slots here and it looks like this okay so it makes it a little like a letter H kind of and then what you want to do is you've got to get the grid like the see how it's open on the bottom you've got to get that in the little there's little notches on the bottom there you need to get that in there or it's not gonna it's not going to uh, I like to set it like that and make sure those notches are in and then like lean it down otherwise they will tip over okay so just remember that the notches the uh, the little notches at the end need to go in one of these little holders it's gonna pop out two of your markers so two of your markers are gonna stick out further than that but um, so it's not going to be perfect, perfect when you're looking at it. But that's how you be able to put them in there without them falling over. If you don't, let me just show you. And for some reason, they gave me one yellow and one blue for one of the stands, and the, all the other ones were blue. Very strange. But um, I'm sure you know. Sometimes because I get uh, I get advanced things to review. Sometimes things are not completely worked out by the time that I get them. So if I just set them on this, you know, they fall over. You know, if I just set it on there, it's not gonna. It's not gonna stay unless you get those little notches you get the notch like that so it can hold it up but I think this is a neat little display um, you know that is going to take up a bit of a footprint here because you've got three of them um, so I don't know if I'm really sold on this but you could easily put this inside of a rack and make your own marker stand I like these sturdy plastic um, 
dividers because you can keep your markers in order by how they're going to blend. So, um, so I'm a fan of that. And um, I just wanted to show you what this whole set entailed and how to put this thing together and um, give you all the information that I have about this in case you want to uh, try these for yourselves. Like I said, same colors as the original ALP markers. They are going to be coming out with all of the same colors from the ALP series. So if you remember the, um, the ALP markers, they came in these boxes like this. There was a set of 90, a set of 80, and a set of 36 skin tones, and a set of like 24 gray tones, and that was a full set. Or, actually no, the grays, no, if you got the skin tone and the set of 80 and 90, that was all the colors in the range. Or you could buy them by color families and get all the colors in the range. I don't know if they're going to come out with a color family packs, but they are going to release all the markers in a line. But the most economical way to get them would be to get the 80 set, the 90 set, and the 36 set. Right now, they just have the 80 and the 36 set. But um, hopefully, this gives you all the information you need to make a choice on these markers. As I said, they sent these to me to review. Um, the, the only big negative I have is I think this case is really cute, but I think it's very difficult to use. And, and if they're watching this, all you got to do is extend the zipper like you did on the smaller case so that we can open this all the way. Because I love how neat and tidy it is, but it just needs to be able to open all the way so we can easily access those markers because that's kind of a pain. It'd be fine for travel, but if you want to take these out, you got to dump out all your markers and then you got to fish out the, uh, you see the grid in there, then you got to fish out the grid at the bottom. It's just, um, it's just uh, kind of a pain in the butt. But other than that, I think these are lovely. Keep in mind, they're a, fi they're a fi uh, fiber tip nib. They're not the foam rubber, but for around a dollar a marker, you really can't um, you really can't expect that. And they are reversible nibs, so if one starts to fray, you could flip it around and still get plenty of use out of the marker. And I like that. I've had the Ahuhus for quite a while since they first came out, and I haven't had to flip around any of my nibs. None of them have frayed. The fiber nibs nowadays seem to be a lot better than the fiber nibs back when they first came out, back when it was like the Studio 71 one and the um, like the store brand markers it would just be toast in no time they seem to have improved a lot because I haven't had any desalination or issues with my ohuhus and they appear to be the same nibs as we have here so hopefully this was helpful if you have any questions let me know in the comments below I'll help you if I can um, and um, I will link to this product on Amazon they will be available in on Amazon US and Amazon UK so um, that's a good portion of my viewers um, I don't know what their plans are beyond that. But thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like reviews. And until next time, happy crafting.